Hello everybody and welcome back to The Hidden Breach and another episode of The Trash Talk. I'm Hagen aka Geist and today we are looking at the new Ten Thunders models from the Ashes of Malifaux book and here with me today are Dryson and the infamous Joker Boy. So guys, um, <laughs> I know you but maybe our listeners don't so I would like you to introduce yourselves, um, stressing when you entered tabletop gaming and how you found your way to Malifaux. Dryson, why don't you start us off? Sure. Um, tabletop gaming. Well, I, I started with competitive computer gaming, so I used to play a lot of Command and Conquer, um, and that was sort of where I got into competitive gaming in general. And then um, when I changed city, I wanted to go meet a bunch of people. I started just joining some board game clubs. There I saw on the other side of the room were some guys playing what looked a bit like sort of more hardcore board games. So I was like, what the hell are those? Went over and asked, and as with many uh, tabletop communities, they were pretty welcoming. And that was in fact War Machine. Um, and then I played that for three and a half years or so and got uh, reasonably competitive uh, there, really enjoyed it. And um, uh, and then after, and then COVID hit, took a break. Uh, ended up sort of uh, moving away from War Machine because it was switching um, the Mark, you know, going from Mark 3 uh, to Mark 4, and I wasn't a big fan. And um, and then, uh, so when I came back, I was looking for, I was sort of always on the lookout for the next competitive tabletop with a sort of solid rule set um, with, and with enough players around me to, to compete. And, um, I, and more than one person, you know, some Austrian friends, some Czech friends and some Polish friends all mentioned that Malifaux was sort of picking up in their areas. And um, and so I, I took a look at it. I took a demo game and um, I, I, and fell in love with it. And here we are. I've, I've been competing uh, ever since. Yeah, awesome. Sounds great. And Joker Boy, how is it for you? How did you end up here? Uh, how did I end up here? That's that's a good question. Uh, very, very differently to, to race, I guess. Uh, I came into tabletop just by loving models and, and started uh, like painting around, building some models when I was younger. Uh, of course, with, with Warhammer, which is probably the most famous one. Um, then I recognized that at this stage, uh, Warhammer was like over with an initiative role most of the time back, back in the days. And so I was asking my local game store manager for a yeah, game that's, that's more fun. Um, and he introduced me to Malifaux. Oh. Uh, later on, it turned out it was at the beginning of the second edition. And yeah, I'm I'm stuck with it since then, and I, uh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So actually, you you got the <laughs> you got someone in the store to point you towards Malifaux. That's interesting. Most stores around here um don't know what you're talking about. If you go into the store and say, "Hey, how about Malifaux?" They're like, "Yeah, you want to buy some Warhammer?" But um, awesome, cool, uh, good for you, I guess. So now, what we are going to do together is taking a look at the new models and then we are going to give our expert or uh, no expert opinion depending uh, <laughs> <laughs> on those models so um we're going to do this in the order of the book as concerned for all the orange colored and thunderous models and then we're going to just call out randomly for the others so first model that i got here is sen so s-e-n not to be confused with the other one and <laughs> it's a seven soul stone enforcer from honeypot and key and gone keywords so who wants to start with that one i i wouldn't mind um i i, I liked um so it's an interesting one because when i first started looking at the uh the ashes models for thunders um i had very different opinions than i do now having tested them um, and originally sort of from looking at the card and the text only, and, and I should say as a disclaimer, I'm very bad at judging cards based only on their text. I really do need to things, see things on the table before I can, uh, uh, sort of comment wisely or at least try to. And, um, and Sen was one that I was particularly down on when I first saw her because at first glance, she is essentially uh, a souped up beckoner and she costs two more. Right. Um, so she has beckoning call instead of lure and she has serene countenance instead of the beckoners sort of uh, similar version, but they have to have brilliance for it to work. 
um, and they both have rigged the deck one, so that's not an improvement. And she has this reading the room, so she can gain brilliance, but who the hell cares? Because, you know, your models having brilliance is rarely that important in Lynch 2, and who the hell cares about Lynch 1? So... Um, and then the favor token, I'm thinking, well, it's a pass token, except you can't use it to do the one thing that you want to do with pass tokens, which is pass. So um, so I really wasn't very keen on the model. And then she's got a stat five willpower attack. Um, and, and then even if you get that attack through, the opponent gets to decide which of the two effects is better for them. And they always get to pick that effect. And I'm never keen on that sort of thing. So I really, really wasn't very keen on this model. Um, that changed as I moved towards um, looking at her less as a, a Lynch 2 option and going back and looking at her in a Yoko 2 uh, mm -hmm. list. And the reason for that is that the Aces and Eights bonus, which draws up to two non-Joker cards from your discard pile with a combined value of eight or less, um, it, it's a got TN of seven, but you've got Rig the Deck, so you can pretty much always guarantee you're going to hit that, and that is what you will tend to use your Rig the Deck for. Um, and then you draw these two cards, and it doesn't really matter what the value of them is. What matters is that Yoko 2 can then turn them both into 13s. So the value of aces and eights goes up quite significantly. Also, it could be um, you've, you've got options. So if you've got Hinamatsu in your crew, then suddenly you've got one seven and one one. The one becomes your flurry card. Fantastic. And most importantly is that that seven, you, you, you wait until you have the suit that you need for a trigger that you want, and then you pull it out of your deck guaranteed or not maybe guaranteed but reliably and you're thinking okay but which which ones do i need well i'll tell you you need the uh, heroic intervention crow trigger on bill to be able to do the uh, the extra two damage if they're foolish enough not to have a, a preparatory scheme down um, or you need the mask trigger on yoko's um uh, bonus to try and remove a severe from the game each round that's particularly good to get in the first few rounds obviously the, the later it is the less value it has but then the other one and the one that i've been really enjoying recently is the five plus rams that you need for zeng and we'll come on to him a little bit later um but for his bonus to basically guarantee uh, an extra move and attack per turn on a 10 soul stone model which is huge that is value yeah. so um sen and zeng while sounding remarkably similar also uh, have a fair bit of synergy so i am a little bit excited about sen even without talking about her actual abilities whatsoever just front of card plus bonus already makes me like her quite a lot how did you guys uh, value her i'm i'm crying inside right now as a bus player because i would like that five of rams for rykard every turn please but okay <laughs> <laughs> that is what happens um so joker boy do you have any um other thoughts on this models on this model as for uses and what you like about it probably not other thoughts but some additions uh, i'm Totally agreeing with with Jason that uh, Sen is a really good model, especially for the uh, Qigong crew, and that's mainly because of her bonus. I think she's like seventy percent is her bonus. Um, I think she has also a bit value for Lynch too, because her aura is not that bad, especially if you're playing on a like obey heavy thing, obeying your opponent. The minus one willpower does stuff. Because uh, uh, okay, it's, has own... it's an attack action, not a tactical. Yeah, it doesn't apply to obey, sadly. Oh, you're you're right. Oh, Sorry for we, that, guys. We we would we, <laughs> <laughs> we would be we would be very well with you at this point, but I, we got excited for a second there. <laughs> I did think for a sec, did I get that wrong? Because holy hell, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that, no, no, that comes from when you when you just uh, reading cards, never played them, and then just like overread a, a single word <laughs> yeah it's only tactical action so the use in, in lynch 2 is basically um kind of limited towards tenants um boring convo and i think lynch 2's uh, bonus action as well the willpower uh, lynch, yeah lynch 2's willpower 12 or gain a brilliance or yeah. uh, uh, so winneth maddox um come play at my, my table. table yeah uh, just to, just to save my honor is, isn't the bonus on huggy where he hands out slow for brilliant stuff. Yeah, that, that's Google. also willpower yeah. 14 becomes willpower 15, which is brutal. Mm. Willpower 15 yeah. or slow is nasty. <laughs> I would argue also that in Qian Gong, there are a fair few places where this becomes pretty good, most notably Gather Intel on Yoko 2, and then Hinamatsu's three inch distracted um, aura. Both of those happen a fair amount. 
That is true. Mm. True. Um, you know, just kind yeah. of incidentally, it's not something you're looking for. You're not building around it, but if it's there, sure. Yeah, and also the, the beckoning call with the inbuilt light inside, which is basically another two inches in the Lynch 2 crew uh, of movement, is, is quite nice. Uh, fair. Um, and as Drayson already said, but just to, to say it out loud again, I am not a big fan of favorite tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, just because they're an from my opinion, unnecessary addition. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a bit weird if you're like um playing this this crew and you got brilliance token and then you take a monk and you got chi token and then you got pass tokens and favor tokens and you're playing cloak yeah. and dagger and get intel tokens. I feel like I'm um, having a lot of um, bookkeeping to do uh, and <laughs> throwing tokens around and gets really confusing on the real table as well. So I think this could have could have been a more elegant version. Um, of token or if at all reading the room could be something different okay so no fan of those interesting um why um are we only talking about the titles don't you see sen as a opportunity to open up the original masters and there's the appropriate silence when we're talking about lynch one and yoko one so yeah <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 That, that 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 is that is fair. I'm I'm not gonna edit this. I'm not gonna edit the silence. No. No. Out. I mean, that, that silence was, was was meant to be there. That was the, that was not like a, an unplanned pause. That was no, yeah. just crickets, crickets yeah. chirping yeah. in the distance. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some. Okay. Yeah. That is um. Yeah. That was a, that was a work of art there. Okay. So <laughs> so 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 none of you guys are at all considering ever playing those. No. No, okay, because I'm not saying no to Yoku one. Uh, okay. I think she has her very, very, very small spot, and maybe these songs all about you is an okay addition. But in general, I'm with with Drayson. I think we will see at least in the on the competitive side only yeah. the title versions. Yeah, right. If we, if we want to give any sort of fairness over to Yoko One, um, and I think you know, okay, fine. Um, if you're doing that, then um, Sen is a particularly good model for that crew um, yeah. because, as I mentioned earlier, this song's all about you. Gives the opponent the choice. In other words, whichever one is less bad for them, that's what they'll take. However, suddenly, when they're discarding cards in range of Yoko 1, you are suddenly drawing cards, which means yeah. both options are suddenly horrible, and being distracted against Yoko 1 is horrible as well, because um, you already are, and it just starts to stack up beyond where assist could ever get you out of it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that is um, is a place where Yoko One would start to shine a fair amount. And in addition to that, you've got the if you're talking about Lynch One, and again I, we we shouldn't be, but if we are, then um, beckoning call, adding um, brilliance tokens, and bringing people in towards Tannen, and making Tannen's six inch aura more brutal than it already is. Um, that starts to stack up a little bit better than it did before, certainly. Okay, fair. So no saving grace though for those two because um my only game with Sen was um was no, no my two games, one of those was was in Yoko one and I was uh, I was I was it it felt good because I, I can't play this master, but um this song's all about you definitely has has the um potential to impact the game highly in Yoko one. But then, yeah, okay, we have we are talking the competitive side of things, and um, then we are just not gonna play this. That that is fine. That is fine. I think um, Yoko one makes the opponent gloriously miserable for three turns, and, and then they kill you and win. Yeah, yeah, that is that is also fair. I, I think I would take the three turns of giving misery to someone and then give them the win kind of gladly sometimes because um, sometimes it's delightful yeah sometimes it's not in a tournament <laughs> and yeah. then and then and then zen is kind of also it's a good model there <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one last comment on zen before we move on because yeah, sure. I, I have to i have to defend the favor token ever so slightly okay, okay um and there is one reason to defend the favor token and that is in yoko 2 mm -hmm. um and or against hamlin which is an amusing place for it to be useful because where the rat activates chooses not to activate and makes you discard a pass token you can instead discard the favor token oh. so it does in fact earn you a pass token an actual pass token when you're playing against hamlin oh that is that is awesome um cool 
Um, and the other time is that Yoko 2's um, end of activation of an opponent ending within eight of her um, can discard a favor token to hand out distracted. So you almost never want to discard a card or a pass token, but you're more than happy to hand uh, to discard a favor token. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you gain much more access to that Kian Gong baked in suit um, by having two models with distracted nearby. Normally, this isn't a huge thing in Yoko 2, but it becomes easier to access and you're not sort of really really feeling like you're paying for it. You're feeling like it's incidentally happening. And when that happens, there are actually quite a lot of suits that you can bake in that you care about. Um, main ones being uh, Charm Warder's bonus so that you can just grab another model for free over in the corner and just try and ping it off the off the board. Uh, Bill's um, Tome Trigger on a Heroic to do two more damage or remove a scheme map wide. Again, that's pretty sweet. Uh, crit on Bill. Uh, Charm Warder um, Jinx for, the, for card drain. You know, suddenly yeah. just remove two cards and have it baked in there are lots of things where you think wow that's actually pretty strong not usually worth investing in but if it just happens to come your way sure oh yeah sure if it's free then it's free well it sounds great um right off then let's let's see uh if the other model adds something to what you guys just said uh next model is goto p-o-t-o -O, and it's in six soul stone and force a construct from both of these keywords um so joker boy do you want to take us off on this one what were your initial thoughts on this my, my initial thoughts are uh i'm <laughs> not that good uh, I just wanted to ask Drayson if he had tried him out uh, at least once and what he like experienced. Because just from reading the card, I personally don't see a reason to hire him. Maybe, either in a Qigong yeah. or in a Honeypot crew. But maybe if you put him on the table, it turns out differently, but I'm not sure how. So I, 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 I'll, I'll counter with a question, um, which is, do, does anyone know what the KOTO stands for? Because I've heard someone say it one time and it bothers me that I can't remember. Um, yeah, I could read it because it's in the, in the, in the fluff text of the book. Um, uh, Shall I chat on about the model for a sec and you find out what the hell that means because it's bothering me? <laughs> uh, if, yeah, of, of course. Uh, tell us why the model is... Um, uh, I'm uh, also curious. Yeah, yeah I, I'm going to look that up. Not a problem. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Koto, well, uh, yet more proof that I'm awful at reading cards and figuring out what they look like on the table because I was the exact opposite that I was with Sen, which is that I was excited about Koto. And um, I thought, huh, Armour 2, uh, I was looking at it from a Lynch 2 perspective perspective so for reference that's where i was coming from um i was thinking another rig two model that only costs six um he's got armor two which is not in the keyword and so people don't tend to tech for it and it's not already expected so for example taking him in key and gong less exciting because there's already hinamatsu and bill you should expect some anti-armor tech but in again in lynch two they're probably not bringing any and suddenly they've got this chunky boy um up front then his ability to discard brilliance i was thinking well we've often got a lot of brilliance on our own models but only kitty can ever really use it um so suddenly every model that goes near him can can gain some shielded just for free so your 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 honeypot um crew suddenly has shielded i thought that's going to be good and then reading the room you know I, I wasn't that big on it but i thought okay well what it does is it allows koto to have armor two and shielded every round which makes him very very um uh, unpleasant to to mathematically kill and so most people just won't bother hitting him as such he'll get to stand up front and just do drain life a couple of times um maybe cost people some cards maybe hand out some brilliance which is fine in the early turns of course what he's going to do is simply nervous energy um to push two models two inches i thought you'll run crews that have both koto and tannin so you'll have two delirium models you'll have um handing out the the brilliance and then you will uh, get two models plus this model to go two inches then two of them will gain well all everyone will gain brilliance and two of the ex uh, and two of those will then go another two inches so it's a hell of an unpack i thought it's a little bit like than Giong, you know that kind of like everyone unpacks for free beautiful let's do that and then pluck the strings i thought unresisted stun within four inches yeah. um not to mention the willpower duel or the distracted like that just ignore that for a sec it is if we get some brilliance out then we can hand out stunned amazing um in actual fact what happens <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> is you uh you don't get the ram trigger on the nervous energy because you need it for lynch 
and it's just much yeah. more important to get it on him. You yeah. cannot afford to run both Koto and Sen because it's way too much support within a, any crew, and it doesn't. They don't have enough synergy between themselves uh, to warrant taking both. And as a result, you can't find the ram trigger. So then his nervous energy becomes pretty bad. Additionally, the stunned thing it is actually genuinely very hard to get three brilliance on anyone you care about without accidentally killing them in the process. Yeah. Like unless they just stand near Maddox and cheat like hell. Yeah. They're, 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 they're good. In order to get that much brilliance, you'd have to hit them so many times. You may as well have just killed them. Why are we hitting them that many times just to give them brilliance, just to give them stunned? Just kill them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so actually, he's pretty bad. And also, um, the shielded thing, the discard brilliance to gain shielded, that's when the model activates. So one of the models he's trying to protect is uh, Tannen, um, and then he loses his manipulative. Um, or Maddox, who wants to go midway through the turn so that she can refill a hand. So all of these models have specific times at which they want to go, and then it, it really doesn't synergize particularly well with the good luck charms and the ability to discard brilliance for, for shielded. So um, in actual fact, Koto, a bit sad. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was... guess we can agree on that. Also, since you said Armor 2 is a nice defense tag, I, I still think that defense 4 and a size of 3, for whatever reason, is just you're going to get killed by so many little yeah. stuff or shooting. Yeah, and it's not, not to forget that um, it is on a 50 millimeter base as well. So it's, it's a really, yeah. it's really awkward, sta awkward stat line. Okay. Um, I was thinking how much shielded you could get realistically and it's not it is not that much it's probably two or three shielded per turn um because the thing is kind of kind of slow and also this gg doesn't doesn't allow you to go um and bubble up super hard if you could super bubble up in the center then this would probably be okay ish but i think both keywords have better options for six soul stones um one of those is taking six soul stones and just using those um to, to yes stuff, i didn't so. even consider using him in key and gong actually i never even thought about that um no that looks horrific <laughs> <laughs> i don't know the plug the strings um yeah i mean if you if you misposition this then it's out of the game uh, you have to put it in the right spot and your opponent has to oblige you and say yeah cool i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna um, be bothered by it a bit but other than that yeah um, not not too much of a fan either i i think you need to shuck an inbuilt mask trigger on that bonus Ye so, yeah okay then, then. At, at which point I, I start to care a little bit more because yeah. it means i can start f stacking favor tokens early and then i can use those for pause flips on my big beaters or i can use them for yoko handing out distracted in other words it gives me a reason to ever take it in key and gong and it, it guarantees that i can get that brill if i do go through all that effort of getting the brilliance tokens then i do at least definitely get the stunned whereas at the moment it's not even guaranteed even when you jump through all the hoops so i think give him the mass trigger on the bonus and he'll see a bit more play maybe not at the very top end but but um, yeah, you know, I think some players would really enjoy him, and I think it's a a fairly cool model. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. So back to the question: what key O T O meant? Because um, I was a bit confused like two, two minutes ago because I read this today and my brain did not. Uh, stick to it i forgot already so that either means it's something really weird or something that i think is really bad so you, you guys can decide for yourselves because <laughs> keo to is the king of the octave because he can play so many instruments it's the king of the octave oh yeah um now i don't want to play this model at all i'm honest with you i wish i wish i never read this text cool um <laughs> No, I, no, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's key O T O done. Um, sad little robot on a fifty millimeter base. That's probably it's it will probably be a nice looking sculpt. Let's let's put it like that. Okay. Um, next in line we got Ban Ying, the new henchman from Last Blossom and Monkey Words. So, any one of you guys have any thoughts about this new beauty? Uh, I will just start. Yes, I, I, I have some thoughts on it. Uh, first of all, it's always nice having a not-too-expensive henchman for the keywords. Uh, 
On the other hand, I'm not sure if especially the Monk or the Lust Blossom keywords was in desperately need of, of that. Um, but still, uh, first of all, I love everything of the model. I love the idea. I love the artwork. Um, problem is I didn't find a space in any of my lists. Uh, I played a lot of Misaki. I'm playing, I played a lot of Shenlong. Um, and I really have no idea where to fit him. Not because he's bad, but just because there are, I think, many competitive lists out there. Um, and they weren't missing anything, especially not Vanjin, I think. Because Misaki never had a lack of shadow markers, in my opinion. And Banyin does nothing really for a Shenlong crew. Um, so a great model overall. I think it's just the keywords that will suffer him to not be seen a lot on tables in competitive play. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm thinking about when I was reading his card. Yeah, okay. So if we can't find a place on our list for it, then the question probably is what kind of role was the model or is the model supposed to fill? So is it a beater? Is it a scheme runner? Is it a support model? Where would you where would you insert this model? Uh, I would say he's like 60% scheme runner, 40% beater, 0% mm -hmm. support. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> so, so, sounds likely. Um, how does he um, appear a schemer to you? Oh, I think the, the, the ninja vanish makes him quite fast. And mm -hmm. being able to like take out smaller scheme runners and still be able to like probably interact. Um, it, it's just his his mobility that makes him a an okay scheme runner, I guess. Yeah. So talking about those awesome stats, so it's a five 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 two stat line, so nothing to write home there. Um he got an inbuilt defense trigger on defense and movement on mask to um teleport. No. Uh, yeah, sure. To drop yeah. a shadow mark and base compact and then teleport anywhere within six. So it's kind of an um upgraded deeper side which i think is is kind of neat it can use chi like every monk can and um yeah it can after friendly scheme or shadow mark has dropped uh discard a card or a chi token to summon a sunless self which is a kind of marker like model that he can summon we're going to talk about that in a second and he gets a chi token if a model within six is killed so it's also, nothing is hyper exciting. There's nothing like super new apart from the sunless self summoning, which is okay. We're going to look at this if this works for us. Um, the attack action is stat 5 for 245. I mean, yeah, it, it has chi use, so it's going to be stat 7 a lot of time, but on an 8 source on henchman, it's a bit cringe um, as a base stat line. The dark and chi. Range attack is six inches only, and it's six against defense for one, three, four, and dropping a shadow mark into base contact. So it's a bit like what the um, how's the guy with the glasses called? I forget every time. What, 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 in which what? keyword are we talking? Uh, Misaki, the explorer's model, Jin, Jin. 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 Oh Jin. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so it's a bit like Jin's um attack action or Misaki's two attack action. And yeah, and then we got the ninja vanish, which is yeah, it's it's a cool thing. It was always already a cool thing on um the Torakage, but we don't see those either, so that hasn't I mean, uh, I, I've stayed fairly quiet on this one because um I, I think the model is primarily a Misaki um model. Yeah. And I just have no interest in Misaki. Um, so I, the, the the monk bit seems a bit like just chiseled on. So they've just kind of gone, oh dear, we need a second keyword. So what we'll do is we'll drop the stat and then we'll give him chi. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, oh, we need something with chi. So how about Dark when a model's chi. killed? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then we'll, we'll call the other attack. It was probably called, you know, Shadow Strike. We'll, we'll change it to a chi so it sounds more monkey. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, Shadow um, Chi. Yeah, it's like, okay, nice, well done. Um, but the, um, uh, I, I, from like from my brief look at the card, I mean, obviously I have no reason to ever take this in a Shenlong crew. I just, the, the, there's so many better options and, and I just don't, what, why? But but if you were going to, 
I, I could see this line of play, which is because he costs less than you, you can give him fast. Then he ninja vanishes to a sh shadow marker. He does dark and she on stat six or eight, depending on the defense of the target. That drops a shadow marker in place. He then does illusionary strike. Um and with Shadow Shell game on stat 7, teleports to that Shadow Marker, which, uh, given that it's a small base and can be in base contact, it's slightly more than one inch, therefore you could be placed a hell of a long way from where you started and outside of one inch of the target, so in most cases, unengaged. And if you were fast, you would then have another one to drop down a Scheme Marker. So it would be sort of a uh, an artillery Scheme Marker. Um, but am I paying eight stones and taking this guy in a Shenlong crew? Am I hell? Um, I mean, Shen 2, I also never consider Shen 2, but I know um, Zwe in, in Poland like values Shen 2. Is there, is there some Shen 2, Ban Ying kind of thing I'm missing here? I, I don't think so. I thought about it. And if like the ability to attack through um, Sunlift Cells or even Shadow Markers <clears throat> would be a front card ability and not only on his Illusionary Strike, then maybe, because then he might be interesting with some of the Shenlong upgrades. Um, as it's standing on the card, I'm not seeing it. But again, there are much better players out there and maybe someone finds a way. And again, because you said he's more like a Misaki model, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, but again, I just don't see why any Misaki crew needs more Shadow Marker generating, because right now, we're playing an eight souls on henchman who takes shadow markers away and summons better models because we have too many shadow markers already so yeah yeah i mean some people are talking about replacing ototo with banying to have simply cheaper shadow marker generation in order to then use minako to turn them into katashiro but i think that ototo is enough of a better model that i'm happy to pay the extra and yeah. it's it's more reliable it feels to me um yeah also it's it's a bit easier than all the i mean you you explained how the um i teleport myself to kingdom come and hit two attacks and then drop a ski marker thing works um even with enough chi this is some kind of, there's a lot of investment concerning that you need oh. um you need a mask you need two cards to hit uh you can't black it doesn't sound reliable and while ototo ototo is a super simple yeah, model yeah. because you can play shadow markers and teleport to them or you can it's wham so people awesome. with a big club and make them cry that is basically what he does so you don't me go club yeah yes. yeah me go club so while it's for some people not as appealing to play models like this it has a it has a defined role and you take it for that for that purpose it makes shadow markers and then it goes and punches people over the head so that it seems to seems to me like the better option. Um, I mean, with Chi and good cards, Ban Ying is probably more survivable, given that you run out of soul zones at some point. But I mean, have, have either of you spotted anything on his summons that makes this any of this more appealing? Because I haven't. No. Nope. No. Nope. No. <laughs> no, not really. Because... Right. I, I guess not. But I just. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I mean, we can talk about the Sunder Selfs yeah. right now, I guess, because it's it's just fitting. Uh, yeah. I, again, I, I like the artwork, I like the idea, um, but I, yeah, I, I don't see the need or, or what, what's their purpose. Yeah. Uh, I, I would find them rather interesting, honestly, if you add Blade Rush to them, because then you like have a one you basically got thing Marathine with again, haven't you? <laughs> like... Yeah, but with a much less... <laughs> with a much worse attack. Um, sure. Uh, but yeah, pro probably with a Blade Rush, um, they would make sense. Uh, like they're written... Again, they're nice, uh, really nice artwork. I, I guess they're going to be really cool models. But... 
yeah, they're living shadow markers right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you, but for a different reason, which is that I can simply dip them in a black wash and call it done. Genius. <laughs> I that, like, is genius. That, is, that is quality. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. And you, you could paint the eyes for extra points like this. Would well, take some, I mean... I mean, that is 30 seconds of your time to really shine on the <laughs> tournament. You are the only one that has actually painted models. Great times. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I mean, at least they're mindless, so they don't give your opponents pass tokens. And then they, but they, they will do next turn, and that's that's the problem. I that, think. Yeah, and then they just pop after activating. That is also the yeah. thing. They just become a shadow marker. So you turn a shadow marker into a sun itself. And then your opponent gets a pass token. This thing, this thing, in all probability, won't do much. However, it cannot be sniped out prior to activating. Yeah, the that's the only thing I would say. So yes, you do give them a pass token in the following turn. However, they cannot get activation control from it. Yeah, that is fair because they count as having no health at all. But still... Uh, wait a sec. Can they be killed by exorcism? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, then... Yeah. So then I take it back. They can give the opponent activation control, but it's uh, predictable and tricky. Mm, indeed, indeed. Um, but what you get is basically a shadow marker that can move it and other friendly shadow markers uh, around the board and then the question is for for what do i need this exactly i mean yeah. of course makes everything easier to set up but then i walk my super important shadow marker somewhere and the sunless self goes pop becomes a real destructible conceding shadow marker and my opponent says oh yeah that is a really that is a really important shadow marker i'm just gonna slam that i don't i don't see how how this is selling for me so yeah. and if you guys maybe don't if they maybe if they got the ram like built in once per activation or something like that mm, for because heal is something misaki crews probably need mm -hmm. they only have the totem most of the time yeah uh, but yeah again card is ridden i don't see it i mean as I mean, with all of misaki my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined like oh, it's yeah so sad so sad um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good to have have someone that actually doesn't play one of the keywords at all. That's cool. Um, yeah, if the... uh, not just one. <laughs> We're oh, gonna yeah, come to the boilermaker. Oh, We're gonna have a boiler, very similar oh yeah, yeah, boilermaker. <laughs> but I can I can save you there. I already taught you. Uh, <laughs> I got very deep opinions. Um, very good. So that is um that is the sunless self. Yeah, both the strengths could come in handy if you got the four rams. But if you don't have the four rams, then yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it seems it pretty mediocre. And I also consider both of the keywords. Um, um, uh, maybe keyword is the wrong thing. But I think both masters are very playable with very different competitive lists already, and they are stacked. Like if I'm building Shen Long, I'll never have like 15 soul stones and asking myself what I want to take. It's it's yeah. completely um uh, full to the brim there. And Mizaki also, I think Thunders also have good out of keyword and versatile options before Ashes of Malifo dropped. So this is dropping into into a hard competition. Uh, I think it's not cutting it. Anyway. And the next in line is the story of Susaku, which is a new eight soulstone enforcer in the Oni and the infamous story keyword. So I imagine that Dreisen has probably some thoughts about this <laughs> as as to regards the story keyword. So uh, take it away, Maestro. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I unsurprisingly uh, started loving a look at this pretty carefully because um, I play a lot of Lin, and um, so what what struck me first is that this is yet another eight cost story model and that is uh, for anyone who's not met lynn or her keyword yet that is a hell of a competition because there are um three story models and map map all competing for the same spot and then you've got the paper tiger just behind at seven um and all of these models are stacked so 
I'm looking at this and saying this is going to have to be pretty good <laughs> before we even uh, consider this. And um, and then it starts talking about reduces damage taken from burning. I'm thinking I have no burning or interest in burning. Um, when this model suffers damage, it may reduce the value of burning. I'm thinking, right, but I have no way to add more burning to it. So its own burning generation is going to, have to be pretty damn good. Um, it's got flight and movement six. That's pretty handy because, for example, Raijin um, can and map map can really suffer if there's a lot of uh, unimpeded uh, unimpeded uh, necessity uh, necessity uh, regarding terrain or if there's big buildings everywhere you know some some tournament tables where you just can't move if you don't have in corp or flying um so so i thought okay flight nice you know i'm bring, uh, movement six all right you know you're bringing me back a little bit heated words enemies treat friendly scheme markers within six of this model as hazardous burning one um a bit weird because uh, this is a story model. It is not a red library model. That means it cannot be reactivated by Lin 1, um, but it does mean that it heals Lin 2 for 1 uh, if it damages a model while in loss of her, as all story models. Um, but while Lin 2 does create a reasonable amount of scheme markers, in order for this to gain real value, you're going to want lots and lots of scheme markers, um, especially since in GG4 you often need quite a few scheme markers to actually score. In other words, they get the removed moved or they have to be in specific places and so they're not going to necessarily be very useful as hazardous so um so i was thinking actually this feels like a lin one um model so a story model but one that you would maybe more take in lin one then we got onto the back of card where we've got up we go um on stat three with a built-in tome trigger against size um so an effective sort of stat seven attack if you think about it uh, against the usual sort of size two model uh, places the target anywhere within three and suffers two three four um, has an inbuilt model that this model i.e the story bird gains burning one for each tome one baked in as i said so he can sort of feed his own burning by attacking nice or the smolder trigger reducing the value of the target's burning and the target uh, suffers one from burning that's not great because we don't have almost any way to apply burning unless we're going out of keyword uh, or versatile and then it's got conflagration um so the um the the sort of the way to put burning on the opponent but i really don't think you want to be doing that all that much it's a pistol eight inch um six against defense uh ignoring burning for the purposes of friendly fire which does two three five and gives burning one and has access to the blaze trigger but it's not built in it's just not that impressive um, especially again when you're putting it in a slot in a keyword with so many stacked eight stone models uh conflagration isn't good enough and therefore the smolder trigger on up we go isn't good enough so essentially what you're left with is a front of card plus access to up we go um and then the bonuses um, and I'm going to be really interested to see how this compares with Joker Boy's recent experience playing um, a Sammy a hell of a lot more than I do. Um, and, and the fact that this is also an Oni model, um, I'm really interested to see what he thinks. Um, but if we come on to those tacticals very briefly, we've got Wind's Wrath moves this model and other models in range, that's three inches, uh, up to one inch. Uh, this is basically very good for disengaging the bird. So regardless of what happens, you can push it and whatever's engaging it one inch apart. So unless they're two inch reach base to base, you can always disengage it doesn't require a flip it isn't resisted so you can do that you can also obviously displace things for raid the vault stuff like that fine um but where i think this gets a bit more interesting is the other tactical um it's a tn7 um fortunately the model as with all story stuff has the well versed so you can probably you know go looking for it friendly only discard a flicker token from the target or end one condition on the target and then this model gains burning two so you, you've basically got some condition removal um which obviously then feeds the suzaku's own burning the most important aspect of this again is lin one who in the start phase with split focus can give your own library model slow to take a general action or a melee action and so you're going to want to do that you're going to want to basically always do that give a model slow get a general action and then use suzaku to remove that slow and gain burning so you essentially get one extra ap um, on a library model every turn it does require a little bit of activation order um, and it requires a TN of seven, and it requires not using the other tactical action. Um, I've been talking way too long. Tell me about whether this is anything like good in Oni, or if it's just a story possibility. 
Uh, yes, I will. Uh, n no, I, I, I don't think so. I think he's really good at in, in the story keyword. I think actually he's even better in the only keyword. Um, I have kind of a like deja vu, uh, thinking back of uh, Lady Yume. Uh, because I think the Asami keyword, especially Asami 1, was always a really good master. And then they added Lady Yume, which was like bringing her a bit over the top. And now there's another uh, Oni model, uh, which brings stuff to the crew, which they didn't have access to. Uh, like uh, a lot of uh, burning damage. Yes, we had the Obsidian Oni, but it was always like a, a self-murder bomb. And uh, now we can apply conditions uh, without killing our own models. We have an up we go, which I think is in general a really strong attack action. Uh, we have another model that can discard flickers from our friends. So I think he brings a lot to the Asami crew. Um, I think his flaming body uh, really does matter if you play him in Asami. Because if you like summon or hire at least one Obsidian Oni, who does his uh, bonus, uh, before the story of Suzaku activates and you have a story who just charges the Obsidian only once, uh, I think you're like, and then adding up the bonus, I think you end up like on burning six or seven with one, a one AP and the bonus. And I think with burning seven, you're quite resistant to, to damage <laughs> for, for you're, quite you're basically a time. basically armor two, but without anyone being able to ignore your armor unless they've got irreducible. Yes. Yeah, fair. Yes. I mean, I, I, I now feel a bit more foolish for judging all the burning stuff a bit so harshly in the story keyword. Obviously, it was more aimed at the Oni side of things. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I, 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 I imagine so, yeah, because like if, if the bonus aura is, is on on the Obsidian Oni and you charge in it, it's like saving one, two for the attack. Three from the inbuilt tome trigger, and then if you do your bonus, it's four, and then you gain two from the bonus, so you're up to six from just charging it and doing the bonus. But then um, you are summoning an obsidian only turn one in your own crew or near it, and you are not killing that Oni because it can't blow up before Suzaku goes in, or you're hiring one, all of which sound horrible, which bring me on to my next question. If you're hiring story of Suzaku in an Oni crew, what are you dropping to make space for it? I, I mean, I, I think I have a quite different approach to Asami 1 than most other players have, like I've seen, because as you know, if you have seen any of my games with Asami 1, I, I play her mainly in keyword. I'm, I'm not going for the Gwyneth Katro thingies or, or uh, summoning Katashiro's with uh, Minako Rei. I, I most of the time stay in the keyword. So I have like, most of the time, 20 soul stones left for different Onis, better Onis, more fitting Onis uh, regarding the encounter. Um, because two yokai and, and uh, Katashiris are nice, but they're like, there are matchups where it's just better to have more heavy beaters. And I think the story of Suzaku is, is adding this. And your and how does heated words work in regards to Oni? I think it doesn't. Uh, act, actually, not not a lot. Right, good. I'm I'm glad I didn't read this completely yeah. wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> <Right>. no. <laughs> um, and is there any sort of like when you look at Wind's Wrath, do you ever kind of go, "Ooh, I can do this" uh, with from an Oni perspective? Because for me, uh, it's mainly just, "Oh, I can disengage, and then I can up we go the thing that I actually want to up we go." But I don't see a sort of niche use other than obviously if you move Raijin, he goes pop, and everything within two it has to test. Uh, no, no I, I think you will like. Most of the time, just use wind up bird. Uh, I I don't see a use for the wind's wrath in in the Sami crew, uh, but it's it's nice to have. It's yeah, I think the opportunity to remove an additional flicker token per turn and gaining a positive effect in addition will trump the wind's wrath like ninety five percent of the time, because uh, removing a flicker token enables you to make another quasi focus attack with you know maybe uh, your Rogomo or something yeah, like and, that. Yeah, and also also being able to potentially remove a condition uh, be because you, you don't have that in the Asami keyword. Fair, fair. Uh, and some conditions really make you struggle. So both, both sides of these actions are, are 
just really good for us. And fair enough. I, I tested this model three times. I tested it in Lin One um, in a sort of let's bubble up in the middle kind of. Uh, lots of schemes everywhere, and then I'm going to use Raijin. I'm going to basically try and make some of my schemes hazardous with my shockwave. I'm going to use um, Raijin's melee attack to, to move people around. I'm going to drop them in schemes. I'm going to make them burn. I'm going to get Suzaku to bring them in, and we're going to move them around, burn them a lot, and be you know sitting in amongst this pile of schemes that no one wants to go near, and that makes Lin invincible, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was uh, pretty good. Um, and the fact that you could then move Raijin around and move the other model around unresisted so it's like here take another burning for free also test this defense 12 or take one damage and stun from Raijin and uh, you know like that kind of let's play a Lin one bubbly burning thing it was fine it was good um nothing to to suddenly go and win a tournament with but it was fine then I tried it with Lin two in a pure sort of kidnap um perspective so it was the idea was I'm gonna go with Lin two I'm going to go with Suzaku and Raijin in the list. And um, and I'm going to go very, very late with Lin Tu. I'm going to go reasonably early with the rabbit um, to go forwards. And I'm also going to go forward with Wukong and or a bookkeeper. And I'm going to set up a little trail of breadcrumbs of scheme markers to allow me to, um, to maddening drums with Raijin anything that comes too close, I'm going to bring that in and try and bring it to some hazardous terrain if that's a cactus on the map or just, you know, a scheme marker near Suzaku if you don't have one, etc. And then I'm going to use Suzaku to up we go, up we go. Um, and I'm going to use Paper Tiger to chuck those two models forward. So Tiger goes raw, raw on Suzaku and um, and Raijin. They're up the board. You've got some scheme markers up. You drag people in and you just... And then Lin 2 goes and just deletes them. Um... It's, uh, it kind of works, and I think it catches people off guard a bit. But I think a lot of the time, because we don't have the access to the burning that you need in the story in the story keyword, Suzaku does die for it. So whatever you mm -hmm. steal, you trade for Suzaku. Unless you can really steal, you know, unless you can maddening drums them a hell of a long way. Um... I think you trade out Suzaku, so it's going to have to be an eight plus cost model, and it's going to have to be better than Suzaku. And blah. And again, it's just it's competing with all those other amazing story models. I'm not sure it works in that um, context. And then the last thing I tried um, really failed. So I tried to use it as like an outflank controlling beater. So I thought if someone else is going for outflank with like Wandering River Monks or Necropunks or whatever it is, I'm going to send like a, a one beater to one corner and I'm going to send Suzaku to the other corner and I'm going to control those corners with this very mobile scheme hunter. Um, it's just nowhere near as good as other scheme hunters in the game. Yeah. It's just not. How? You know, you've got Archie, you've got Manos, you've got Zeng, you've got... Uh, there's so many examples. So people are already ready for those. So Suzaku is nothing impressive in that regard. So how did Suzaku end up in that game? What... What... Uh... <laughs> Archie what? food. Yeah, Archie. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I thought. Like, um, uh, it was either gonna be the first mate or Archie saying, "Whoa, bird!" And yeah, okay. And nom, nom 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 nom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honest, honestly, with two, three, four damage, I guess he even struggles against some necropunks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he can't kill him, and and, and, yeah. and his his his, his uh, trigger applies burning to himself, not them. Yeah. yeah. And necropunks are are unpleasant. Um unpleasant people sometimes if they have enough focus and they hit a lucky streak of cars then bird is dead um, and the bird never drops down a scheme of his own so like even if you could get one scheme out for free with the bird then you could make more use of it and maybe burn people more reliably but you always have to have another model or waste a, 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 an ap interacting in order to have a scheme in position to then use for all his tricks it's it's uh i think story is going to be a pretty niche uh, sort of counter tech kind of piece that you're going to use if you see Keris or ever um I don't think it's going to be a regular Lin piece. It might be a bit more of an Oni piece. I'm excited to hear that it might work there. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, that sounds I'm, good. I'm pretty sure I will take it in Asami 1. Just to add that in addition, I know Asami 2 is not played a lot. <laughs> not, not even by me. <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, I think that with the up we go, uh, it's a nice addition to the hazardous markers of Asami 2. Because one of the main problems with Asami 2 is that you can pop out a lot of hazardous terrain but none of your models 
can move models into them. And maybe the story of Susaku does something for us, I mean, too, as well. That but would, I have to try this out. That, that would be um, the hope. Um, because Asami 2 is uh, very much in struggle country. Would Wind Up Bird ever let you get away with doing the Asami 2 double activation without dying? Like, would that make it reliably possible to do that? Um, I don't know no. exactly how that works. No no, 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 no. Because you gain the free flicker when you activate the second time, and flicker oh, so always triggers at the end of an activation. Your activation. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. You gotta I keep. thought maybe they'd found a way to make her theoretically viable, but no, still absolute dog shit. Right? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think though that um, the main problem is that the shockwave is not impressive enough for a master AP. Uh, the shockwave would be better, then I think maybe a Sami two would see more play because it's it's just a one inch shockwave doesn't do enough for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. True. Yeah, but but again you. with. With the story of Sisu, it's like if there's one marker near an enemy models, and because Wind's Wrath also moves enemy models unresisted, yeah. it's like free ping damage for free yeah, 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 for his yeah. all activation. Could, so maybe could be, could be nice. Yeah, but I, I, and if we are looking from the competitive side, I'm gonna say you're probably not gonna rock a tournament unless your opponent is completely <laughs> unprepared for this. Then, then maybe yeah. yeah. Also, the <laughs> I think also um, the the kidnap chain that you described, Ryzen, is also a bit uh, complicated because there are things in the game that can just like you know double walk and kidnap, and if you set it up with a lot of models, hmm. I, I it's complicated. Though it is. Um... It is unexpected, I'll give okay. you that. Like, people don't necessarily think of Lin as a kidnap crew. Fair. And so they're less they're less worried about that. And, and and if you if you do catch someone and just eat a big expensive model with no recourse, that's usually the game, right? So so having the uh, option to do that is nice. I think given if that's your only reason you're taking it, like hope I get them with this, then I'm less convinced. Yeah. Okay. My one concern when trying Story of Suzaku was that for a six move flight model. It felt kind of clunky moving it around because I was missing the the usual ten thunders mobility. I think I, I'm not. I'm Roar not sure. it with a tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Um, ah. if, I, I'm not a fan of models that need other models to um, to move them around to be justified because that justifies the model that moves them around basically. And I don't. <laughs> and I, for me, for me, and um, then the model that gets move around needs to really carry the game more than the story did for me in that one game. Let's put it like that. I'm not saying bad. it It was it wasn't bad. Wind Up Bird, Wind Up Bird was kind of nice because uh, I got a lot of staggered on my stuff. And Wind Up Bird ended up, I think it ended up having 10 burning. It ended up dying to something. I don't remember. Pale Rider. Probably, yeah, I think Payrider killed it in turn five, but it survived a long time. Didn't do overly much, though, apart from flying around and being sad that everyone had lead line code, so you couldn't toss it. <laughs> It couldn't. can build up a hell of an anti-condition crew. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got Lin to map map and story of Suzaku, you've got three different condition removals in mm -hmm. keyword, ready to go, that really don't cost you a whole lot to do. Yeah. Like, that can be... Uh, you know, against a crew that really wants to land conditions and requires them to get its thing off, uh, you can really quite incidentally screw them with models that are fairly decent and you'd kind of want to take anyway. Maybe not Suzaku. I'm not sure yet. No, but it uh, it is an option. I think um, I think for um condition removal, you guys think that we will see this model out of keyword in anything in Thunders? Against Reva 2, maybe. Do you think so? Because I think this dies in Reva 2 quite easily and quite horribly. I don't think yes. it has a survival chance um, beyond yeah, the middle of death. turn 2. Against yeah, Reva. Yeah. I think yeah. it will just get pinged to death. Because you cannot deploy it anywhere in a Reva. You need to have it running the flank. And as you talked earlier, you weren't so hot on taking it on a flank. 
That is. I really opinion. wasn't, but I was under the impression, and I was wrong, that Reva's ping damage was burning, and I know that he reduced burning damage to zero. But I'm wrong. Um, no, it is not. No. So right, okay. Um, oh then yeah, probably not. I, oh. I, I don't think. Okay, you thought that, oh, you, you thought he would reduce the pings to zero. Yeah, then it would yes, be awesome. Yes, I thought you would take ah. the ping, but I thought the ping was in itself burning damage and therefore would be reduced to zero. That's what I thought. Mm, no, the the ping is nothing as friendly as burning damage, sadly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. fair. Um, cool. So that was story of... But society. I mean, like, because if you think about it, up we go is a very, very nice way to get... Um, uh, Lampads out of pyre range or to get shield bearers out of because you can simply walk up to the shield bearer do winds wrath and push both um, you know uh, Reva and the shield bearer away from each other so unless they were specifically base to base the shield bearer is gone that allows you to then take up we go on Reva and put her somewhere unpleasant and so on and so forth so I I, th I was sort of when I was reading it, I was thinking huh maybe mm. okay I, I'm I'm down mm. for testing this my my <laughs> My prognosis of this is um, that Reva will put yeah, the, will put the bird somewhere unpleasant. <laughs> Very dead bird. Yeah. I mean, and, well, given that now I'm I'm aware that she can take the ping damage, I'm 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 more on board with that assessment. But uh, yeah. you never know. Oh yeah, sure. I I think up we go is a super is a super awesome action. Like you can oh, it's amazing. You can yeah. um, block sign lights from A to B by doing this action and set up kills on stuff that usually is not killable. Um, Especially on a site three flight model. Like, I mean, so regardless of what I was talking about earlier with the winds wrath, if you just fly between the two models in your site three, well, that's that's the end of take the hit. You know. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, or you, you know this this explorers crew with the old lady that makes everyone um not die. Mm, there you go. You just you know pick one, put it on the other side, and then say you die now. Bye. That's, yep. Um, that's great. UK. Uh, yeah, I will start talking about Seng, the new ten soul stone enforcer for ten pandas. Uh. First of all, what not to love about this model, it's it's a cat, it has a punch, it is fast, it got some nice defense tags, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, downside it, of this model is I think it finally killed Yasunori out of the faction completely. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's the only downside I see there. Uh, I haven't found a keyword where he cannot be taken. Uh, but still, there, there are keywords that are like more in need of him or can make more use of him. Um, I think Mei Feng is one of them. I think uh, Pai Gong is also nice. Uh, all crews that like can make him even better by giving him fast or some great uh, conditions. Or crews where you just got the hands and you need beta models. Um, Sorry, just run me through and, why Mei Feng is a particular fan of Zeng. Oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking of Mei Feng too. Sorry, I should have probably specialized because she can give him fast, as I'm aware of, like she can do with every model. <laughs> and I, th I think a fast Zeng is just really nice. And I don't see many options to give him fast in 10 Thunders. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong right now, but... Shenlong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Shen Shenlong, of course. But I think that's the only two masters that that can uh, manage to hand out fast easily. Agreed. Um, yeah. And, and may think too, also, like, she has her own summoning tag, so she can hire a lot of expensive beaters to to round the lists up. Um, what you I was mentioned also... defensive tech. So yes. you're happy with the defensive side of the model? I'm very happy with the offensive side. Defensive side? Tell me. Uh, I am. I am for the... 10 soul stones and for its mobility uh, and the offensive tags, I'm quite happy that he has like stat 7 if the opponent does not discard cards, uh, as well as a, a natural neck on damage is also quite nice. You're, you're not happy with the defensive tag? <laughs> I am on the edge. <laughs> so... Um, I like Zeng very, very much, um, and it's one of the models I have tested the most. I have tested it in pretty much every crew that I'm thinking about playing. Um, and it's really interesting how he brings different stuff to different keywords, how he fits in different ways um, in different spots. 
but the one thing that consistently bothers me is that if the opponent is willing to commit to it, and they should be, then he's a defense five enforcer with hard to wound. And that is killable. Mm, indeed. That is mathematically killable, and that is the bigger problem. The, the, the thing is, I, I think right now we're in a in a game state of Malifaux where every enforcer without armor or some other access to avoid damage uh, is it, killable. There, there is no way around it. You, you just have to take the risk. It's, it's similar like Archie or, or some other models. Yes, yes. I, 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 I don't want every model. You know, I don't want. I don't want him to be invincible. I have found that he doesn't tend to get one rounded because with hard to, with effectively hard to wound with warning growl and with the need to discard to attack him multiple times that does sort of combine into it takes several attacks to kill him and then that would be several discards um and so i find that people tend to kill him over two rounds but a 10 stone model um You'd you'd like it not to die over two rounds, and I think it tends to. Fair, but isn't the amount of resources your opponent has to invest into this, um, and the the pain of thought process, then maybe worth the trade? I mean, it it, it, it depends on if they're a card draw crew or not. Hmm. If they have been, you know, improved by or close to the time of madness they will not have a problem with dumping a few cards. That is fair. <laughs> but uh, any old school crew, like you have to discard three cards, do not uh, hit me against that seven. Will mm, they will suffer from discarding three cards? They so, will. Yeah. They will. Yes. If, if you're if you're if you taking Zeng into crews that don't have a significant draw, love it. Um, and uh, again, from testing, I'll just bring up a couple of things that came up. One, um, having a mutilate trigger, an additional mutilate trigger in Thunders is very exciting for Lin 2 um, because it means you're chunking things for 3, 4, 5, then it becomes 4, 5, 6, and then Lin comes in and says, right, well, now I'm a henchman with the same trigger, and I can go 4, 5, 6 reliably. Also, I'm in a crew that draws a million cards, one of the aforementioned, and so I can have those crows in hand and not even spend stones for it. So, mm. Mm, delicious. Also, Lynn, unbelievable amount of self-healing. One of the only ways that she gets killed is by someone really chunking her down and having a warning growl near her. Amazing. Also, Than Giong, very worth mentioning, a very common Thunders model, six inch take the hit, uh, defense armor one plus henchman, already tricky to kill, throw in effectively hard to wound on that model. Things get incredibly tricky to kill. Um, other bits of testing involve simply using Zeng to go to the corners and hunting down uh, scheme runners and, and other sort of, um, you know, tricky to kill models, especially with pouncing strike. If you can line up an attack on a model and then pounce to the model that you're really trying to kill, that can be incredible. He's moved seven. He has a bonus to move seven and attack. So you can effectively attack something 21 inches away and then pouncing strike to something that's 26 inches away. So, um, it is, it is an unbelievable reach in terms of, you know, getting off one, maybe two attacks. Um, and they are min three with reasonably solid triggers, really not bad. So that avoids the problem of um, him being killed over two rounds, because usually you've killed the model that would kill you back. You're miles away from everything, and he's incredibly mobile and can come back in. So I found Zeng to be better and more useful for going out wide, killing something, and then threatening to come back in anywhere because of his immense movement um, and not giving them the chance to two-round him back. The problem with that is that it wastes his warning growl. Where, where have you guys been thinking about testing him? Have you been thinking about testing him in a, in a, in a situation where warning growl really shines? Or have you been thinking more about that sort of flanker style? Um, if I may continue again, uh, I, I think uh, that's why I mentioned Mayfang 2. I think in a Mayfang 2 crew, especially since he's a construct, even he doesn't look like one, uh, you can heal him up with May herself and Sparks easily. So I think he can be a nice centerpiece of like a bubble where he just 
hands out a lot of damage and if he survives he will be healed up close to full um i think he can do similar with shenlong uh because there's also a sheer amount of, of, of healing um but i don't think that shenlong does want to bubble uh, as much as Mayfang too i love the may idea um i mean i i, I never play may in, in thunders and i don't think you probably should but if you did the fact that it's construct is is cheeky i'd, I'd kind of miss that and um i think that's a really cool idea any other sort of construct synergy we could jump in on that's in thunders I, nothing springs to mind no i i don't think so uh mm-hmm. one other thing i was thinking about not sure if you tried him with uh yan lo uh but he could be an interesting target for some reliquaries uh thinking about region and turning off demises and I also think he maybe brings back Isamu kind of, at least in a matchup where it's like important to stay alive uh, and one encounter where like killing and surviving is more important than running around because giving Sang armor one uh, hmm. could do a lot for him. Yeah, indeed. That will probably be really good. Um... Also, I mean, worth mentioning that if you're playing Yan Lo 2, uh, one thing we haven't spoken about and I think is important is that Zeng has exploit vulnerability, front of card, once per activation. After this model resolves an attack action, yeah. the damaged an enemy model, a friendly model within loss can discard a card to take the interact action. Yeah. Um, meaning that Zeng is effectively, or can be, provided these are the AP that you wanted to take anyway, a 5 AP model. 2 AP base, then a bonus, which is another movement, and with the trigger, another attack. And then, as long as you're willing to discard a card, as long as that attack hits, or any of the attacks, then you get an interact as well. So you effectively get 2 AP, plus a move, plus an attack, plus an interact. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome, faction-wise. Uh, and so if you can Parker. obey him then yeah. you get an additional proc of the exploit vulnerability. So yeah. if you're willing to talk Yan Lo 2, then you get that potential for, for extra. Or Misaki 2, or, or uh, Lynch 2. Yeah. Fair. Sounds so far good. Um, I think my limited experience, I was tending more towards go on the flank, skill stuff, and return back. I didn't do the bubble thing. I think he would be really good in some bubble crews. Um, but I get itchy fingers. If I get 21 inches of movement with focus and pouncing strike on my hands, I really, really, I'm really stressed to not go somewhere and say, Hey, you, you hold all that damage for me for a second. Cause that's really tasty. Um, I think if he had armor or something, he would be too overtuned. I think he's, I think he's very, very well balanced for 10 soul stones. And I think he's also on the better end of new 10 soul stones models compared to some of the other stuff that costs 10 soul stones nowadays he's pretty pretty swell not gonna lie well i think jokobo's point about him having plus one armor and being overtuned is that that's a very realistic thing that you can do within a yan low crew yeah but there but then you're you're um you're paying for it by uh you need playing yan low yeah you need yan low you need uh <laughs> yeah okay if you're not a yan, yan low lover you first you need to play yan low then you need izamu then you need to um throw the thing over to him so th- this takes a while and yeah I think I think he's good. He's good anyway. Um. So what what kind of lists um or what kind of role does he fill for you? Is this, is this the straight up beater? Are you dropping keyword beaters for this? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure what I would drop for him, but uh, as you both mentioned, I would probably also play him like as the as the quick arrow who like darts into an enemy crew and uh, takes down key models but again with the warning growl and in the right crew in the right keyword i think he can also be like a, a solid centerpiece fair i think um there are certain situations where i have taken amanazako out of keyword mm. um in various crews where I want to hunt down things with three, four, five. I want a model that's quite um, capable of looking after itself and hunting stuff down. And I think that this would be um, a really good replacement for that spot because I, the problem with taking Amma out of keyword is that if they have any obey effect, she can instantly die. Um, and that paying 11 for a model is particularly egregious. And in order for her to maintain that... Um, 
self-reliable, self-sustainable um, reputation, she needs soul stones because she needs to be able to prevent someone from killing her and then she needs to guarantee the ram trigger to heal back up. And I've been playing lower and lower soul stone count lists recently with GG4. I've just been wanting to have as much efficiency, as many AP significant as possible on the board and having Zeng bring five AP per turn in a perfect world that isn't that difficult to make that happen um seems really good and uh so i've been liking him in lynch too who does tend to play pretty heavily out of keyword anyway and being able to obey him to get that additional interact um mm. is really really good um i've really liked him in yoko um and the reason for that is that he makes bill and hina um who are already kind of a, a pretty iconic duo uh significantly harder to kill but most importantly i like him in a list where you can take uh sen mm -hmm. or uh, a serious amount of card draw because he is only a 5 AP model when you can as close to guarantee the ram trigger on the bonus as possible. Sen allows you to pull that card out of your discard, specifically with the suit that you want, pretty reliably. So I really like that combination. And so I quite like him in those crews. Um, if you don't have that ram trigger, you're down to a 10 soul, st a soul stone, 3 AP model. Where are you getting your focus from unless you're taking Kunoichi? And then again, it's like you said earlier, if you have to have another model to make this model work and he already costs 10, I'm a lot less excited. Mm, true. Although it kind of benefits from the ease of use that it has because stock prey ignores range and... You know, it's it's not it's not hard to use. I think it's nope. it's it's also not hard to get it killed in in dump situations. I <laughs> I, I am, I'm fully agreeing with you there. Um, that happens, but um, yeah, I think with experience, this this will. I I think um, Thunder Spray will come to value this quite highly with this. GG. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And even if it, especially in this, I I drop nine uh nine uh significant model GG. This thing is a terror because it can take out two per turn if if things go well and yeah it is if, if your front line moves forward a little more than you thought and this guy gets into your back line yeah you're is, so sad yeah that's very horrible movement seven is insane I don't know why they crank out movement seven all of a sudden it's okay but but that that's what it is I'm I'm not gonna complain um yeah cool and also this 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 kind of looks neat compared to some other stuff we lately have seen one cool so now we are going to take a look at the out of faction models that are playable in 10 thunders masters and first we're going to start with the host ducat a seven soul stone living enforcer from the wastrel and dua keyword so any one of you guys have a opinion on that model I will just start on this one. Um, so what to say about House to Cat? Uh, first of all, for seven stones, uh, seven health and incorp, that's pretty solid. Forever Doomed is like a really hated ability because it occurs at the most <laughs> annoying times in the game most of the time. Um, I, I think that's all to say about the, the front card. I think his, his attacks and actions are much more interesting. Uh, Attack-wise, he's just a pretty solid seven stone model uh but his tactical actions think where where the money pays off so dark bargain always nice a great addition for the wastrel keyword um and also a uh, like solid amount of healing uh with some extra triggers handing out concealing terrain handing out markers uh some of these work better in the explorer uh, faction to be honest but uh, still a good choice for a 10 thunders waste list what do you think Grayson? um well i think well so if you're playing ducat um in thunders then you are playing him in mccabe so that's the only choice so we we, we can sort of really limit our discussion there and i think at the moment most of us can agree that we're, we're talking therefore about mccabe too so 5-5 five, five quickly becomes 6-6 six, six in quite a lot of situations. Um, and the 
uh, the model is very likely to have fast um, because it's going to be played in keyword, right? And you're going to give it an upgrade and sort of chuck the upgrades around. So you're going to get that fast. Um, and that means that you've got this target heals one, two, three, and you're thinking, well, that's, you know, a perfectly basic heal. But suddenly when you're doing it three times, it means, first of all, the TN of six isn't that scary because if I miss it once, well, I'll probably hit it the other two times. And second is that if I really need it, then I can crank out a total healing of nine here. Um, and that's obviously immense. Um, his fanged umbrella is pretty meh um in the sense of its uh, stat five the only thing worth noting is that it's not enemy only so you can go and smack your own model with a mask trigger and then place the model anywhere within three um, as in ducat so that's kind of a nice uh little bit um but his Derringer, I think, is where we maybe, you know, ungentlemanly affairs very often doesn't do anything. But then suddenly when they're in a cloud and engaged by something and you've given yourself distracted, um, you're on triple positives and stuff like that. And on a two, three, four, yeah, it's on stat five, but you're going to draw out some cards because they're going to have to defend themselves. Um, it can start to feel, start to feel all right. Um, I think this is um, one of the reasons why I like this is because I very, 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 very often ran uh, a low river monk in McCabe 2 already um, because it was it's a keyword that really does like to have a healer and does like to have a couple of support pieces um, and can really benefit from models with a situational or in the case of the low river non-existent bonus and so by giving them the item bonuses you sort of add value and I think Ducat um, sort of fits in there a little bit um, but maybe um, there might be another reason why we're looking at this model. Who's there? Well, I can't be the only one who's seen a Shadow Marker and a Wastrel model, and then you throw in Minako Rare. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm already I'm already so loath to talk about it because I played against it. Um, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not not gonna start to be excited about this for you sorry you gotta be excited all by yourself now yeah you can you can guide us through this i mean it's it's fairly basic summoning is the obvious thing but yeah is it really worth the stones yep that's, I think that's the <laughs> yep yep it's <laughs> good yes it is okay. oh baby is it yeah. <laughs> so um fine you 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 take ducat you have uh, an in keyword model which produces shadow markers very often in other lists you're taking a toto and you're paying out of keyword tax and you're left with a model that you didn't necessarily want in the first place however here you already want a healer you now have one and not only do you have a healer you have one that with a baked in suit drops the markers that you want it to drop then you've got fast from the keyword by giving it an upgrade and so that will allow you to drop three shadow markers per turn that means that minako rea can use those shadow markers with a 10 plus of tomes to create um katashiro because she can only create two per turn because they're minion two um and she's not able to you know she'd have to be fast herself um you've then got sort of one uh shadow marker left over that means that either Ducat can then spend more activations doing more useful things or positioning or whatever later on. Or um, you've got an additional shadow marker left over for Alleyway Echo, which we'll come on to in a minute, um, for those options to gain fast itself. Then you've got Dark Bargain, um, which will allow you to uh, have a target suffer one damage and take the interact action. Um, and so you've got these throwaway Katashiro that can run up the sidelines and plant schemes or um, grant themselves flicker and really hurt stuff uh in the middle with lots of lots of attacks and um tasty triggers and stuff like that so um big fan yeah i i i can hear that um probably also right to be a big fan about this um uh, my my initial my initial thought when seeing this for the first time was was this a necessary addition to the keyword because i never felt in the last two years that the keyword like needed a an additional summoning addition because it was already it was already quite strong and had, had seen a lot of success in competitive play um i don't know if they thought about this or if this was like a a bit of a blooper i would have felt better in the minakure 
um, setting when um, the Tom Trigger wasn't inbuilt on healing energy. But I think then it would kind of fall off uh, being played in its other keyword, which is um, Ivan. So, yeah, um, it, it is what it is. We got ourselves a summoning wasteful option now. Hooray. <laughs> that is good. Good Good for the Thunders yeah. player. I mean, the wasteful keyword did need a healer. Or, I mean, no, didn't need one, but was very, was very glad to have one because you were running low river out of keyword a lot. And so it was kind of nice, especially for all those players that do prefer to play in keyword when they have the chance sort of thing. Um, but you've got like this yeah you've got a healer now which is nice it's got a bunch of cool sort of uh, bits of text on the card nice enough looking model that's all fine um but i i think the main use will be the combination of i mean also it's not only that it drops out those shadows for the Monaco summoning engine, but it's that you very often you've got a corpse curator, which is your upgrade engine. And in order for that engine to work, the, the corpse curator has to take a lot of damage. And now you've got something that actively wants to heal stuff anyway. Um, and anything that wants to do what you want to do anyway is often very, very strong. Yeah, this, this solves uh, like all the problems you had at once and gives you additional options for um, list building. So this so far, apart from maybe the Zhang model, feels to me like it's, it is actually the strongest addition to the faction, even if it has a teal color on the card. It's spicy. Yeah. It is spicy. I think um, I've played McCabe with the Katashiro summoning engine. I've played about three or four games of it. Um, and it, there are some, like, you have to dirtle a bit too much issues, and there are some like do you take it like does it suit the alleyway echo or does it suit sidir or do, like it, there are some crew building tinkering bits to be done but i get the feeling that once the players iron those out it's going to be seen a fair amount yep and him, him enabling you to um scheme later in the game as well draw out secrets on the derringer and dark bargain just seems seems solid seven soul stone um i think a lot of crews would be very happy to have such a such a support more or less this with incidental card draw for just standing near the curator as well oh, and, yeah. and in corp so that you can get it into position because in corp's nice defensive tech obviously but it's also if you've got a dirtly model and then suddenly you you want to just give it fast and double double walk interact um it's it's really not a bad little schemey piece. Uh, seven and seven and incorp and and can't black is mm. yeah 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 that is fair. Also, you can triple walk interact with dark bargain as well. Oh, uh, I'd, I'd even I'd even forgotten about dark bargain. Yeah, yeah dark, dark bargain's a nice little cherry on the cake. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that is uh, that's very round. Cool stuff. Um, any more stuff to say for host to cut, or are we ready to look at the alleyway echo? Mm. I'm done. Yeah. The yeah, fair. Let's okay. Go on. Jumping to the alleyway echo, which looks a bit like taking out of a Marvel or DC <laughs> universe kind of thing. So, um, again, Enforcer, nine soul stone cost. It's Umbra and Wastrel. So it will be Ivan or McCabe. Um, so what's good about this, or is this good at all? It looks like uh, Venom in a, in a Deadpool suit. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm certainly not complaining about the looks of this because it's gonna, it's gonna get really gory. That's gonna be great. Again, I really appreciate models that I can simply dip in blood for the blood god and call it a day. Like that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so ten out of ten on the optics. Absolutely. Yeah. De de definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna spend a day dipping it in blood for the blood god with uh, with a brush and then call myself an artist. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's what's gonna happen to the thing. <laughs> blood for the blood god. It's uh, yeah. Uh, very very good. Okay. Cool. Um. So we're just excited about the looks and the model basically not good or i'm I... really interested to hear what dominic says here actually um I, i've had various thoughts they flick back and forth i've tried the model I, I'm, I'm really interested what are you what are your thoughts me there uh first thought is probably that it's i think it's the only model i can imagine if i don't get the rules wrong which would benefit from getting two upgrades in the same turn um that, that was my first thought honestly um, i think they've ruled MWS wise, at least that you can't do that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes, and in fact, they almost nerfed uh, McCabe's keyword as a whole <laughs> on the basis of the wording rules as written. But I think they've come around in the end to you can 
gain fast over multiple turns from multiple upgrades, but you cannot uh, sort of double dip into the echo uh, single turn double upgrade thing. Yeah, because Roots is written is that if you gain an ability for the second time, you cannot... Um you cannot benefit from the second instance of the ability and the thing that gives you fast on the upgrade is an ability so giving a model a second upgrade would actually rules as written not give it fast so not only can't can't you do it on the alleyway echo it's actually i rules as written McCabe has been played i'm going to say wrong like um with a big question mark behind the word um, for years now. So, yeah. So, sadly, that doesn't work. Would have been very interesting. Yeah, yeah, that was that was very interesting. I was smiling. I was like, oh, yeah. Holy crap. Because I don't think that McCabe um, can't take that nerf. That would be, would be something, though. Uh, we, we're going to wait until the official FAQ for this one, I think, if, if it ever comes on this. Cool. If, if, it makes you, if it makes you any, uh, you know, more interested again, you absolutely can give it fast twice, just not by two upgrades. Not this way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that at least makes this bonus do something. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Uh, yeah. I mean, what to say? It's. It's. I have a similar feeling like the like Zen. I think he's there to dart out some key models from the opponent's list, and. Then the key question is, how does he survive long enough to be worth nine soul stones? Mm, okay. Uh, I and do you think he does or he doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's a good question. Uh, I think he really, it's, it's really depending on the crew you're facing. I think you really have to think if you want to fit him in your lists, uh, depending on what you're facing. Because there are crews that just don't care about combat finesse. And then I don't think he's worth his points. Um, but there are lists like where you know, like at least 50, 60, 70% of my opponent's damage will come from melee attacks. And if you not get really unlucky, uh, I think he should survive this. Mm -hmm. Fair. And how about his offensive output? Uh, you know, people have discussed having a min and mod of three um and then sort of how useful is claustrophobia how much how how, how many cards are you having to invest in this guy to get value what, what are your thoughts on his on his attacks and triggers uh, yeah i mean his severe damage is a little bit disappointing um so i guess you're just aiming for the min three which is K in a McCabe crew because you can just give him the sword and suddenly min 3 is really great, especially against all models that rely on any defensive tech. Um, also having the mask trigger potentially once per turn if you attack like 3 times you, you should hit that at least like every second turn at least uh, with McCabe's card throw probably even every turn. Uh, I'm personally not seeing the, the big get out from claustrophobia it's it's a nice to have but not sure how often i would take it about just a charge in on a soft keyword model on the opponent's side well i think it's that if you've got the cards right then if you get into melee with a with a target you charge it right yeah then with your second ap you claustrophobia with a high ram to get two damage and staggered because and he, he's he's in concealing terrain because he's within one inch of you yeah so wherever they are you you get the the staggered as long as you're in melee and then you get an additional melee attack of course that this is like if you don't have cruelty already lined up i suppose um but you, you're sort of getting three two three with staggered um but the amount of resources that you have to put in to get that, first of all, you're probably going to need to go Ducat, heal Corpse Curator, then Corpse Curator goes and dredges the 
third shadow marker forwards so that then Echo gets an upgrade, gains fast, teleports forward, eats the second shadow marker to gain fast again, then goes... <laughs> like, the, the, there are so... Like, as if McCabe 2 crew building and activation order wasn't already complicated enough. Um, this is hard. And I think that Ducat and Minako are now very, very appealing. So then the question is, what I think you want to do with that is sit in your deployment, hand out three upgrades, summon two Katashiro and giggle, and therefore not have a very fast, leapy model that runs out on his own, and then the entire crew sitting in the deployment, and this boy is out on his own doing his bit, going, hey guys, where, when, when are you joining the... F oh, you're not. Oh. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that depends how you play McCabe too. Uh, since I'm in general playing really aggressive with all of my lists, I probably sent McCabe into my opponent's crew also early turn two at, la at latest. Yeah. Uh, he, he won't be alone <laughs> at my play style. Right. I mean, very, very notably, he is size two, so you can ride with me. That is awesome. You know, you can rough rider this lad up to a shadow marker. And then, you know, then you don't have to do the Corpse Curator thing. So there are, there are like, there are little bits here. I, I, I've changed crew a load of times and I've tried to like basically revolve around Ducat Minako. But there have been times when I've tried to put Echo. Sometimes I've gone with Sidir. Sometimes I've gone with uh, Zeng. You know, I've tried all sorts of stuff. Mm. Um, I think Echo will have some matchups where you know that the opponent's big threat is a melee smacker. And then this boy becomes, yeah, pretty, pretty spicy. Yeah, and another min three yeah. meter never hurts a crew. It's with my, a blade. It's my, it's yeah, just with yeah, it, yeah. my feeling. And I think the, the resource investment goes from what cards do I have? Do I have high mask or do I have a high ram? I would prefer the high mask because it's the more direct action and approach. Um... Although, depending on card quality, you probably want to invest the RAM because Rip and Tear with positive, it's kind of nice. doesn't matter, it's min 3, after all, and nothing nothing of nothing of that is bad when you hit the things. Um, there is a point where I would argue that a high RAM is probably better invested in Mac Cape 2's activation, though. Agreed. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that is why I think the mask is what I want to invest here, if I have it. Or if I just want to go and put out three attacks a turn, if it gets fast or whatever, and um, just pressure my opponent to cheat uh, unwisely, because then McCabe has uh, an easier time going after this. I think this is just the complementary beater. And I see the Dirtle problem if you go Minako. And I think you're just supposed to not do Minako and do Alleyway instead and not Dirtle. And I think then it probably kicks in a bit more. I think it's what you what you say is probably true that it is a bit like counterintuitive to play Minako and the alleyway echo. Because the alleyway echo would only be sitting like two turns in his deployment zone and then it's yes. then it's basically a waste yeah, of stones. I, I wouldn't put them in the same list. I yeah. can envisage a list where you've got two rough riders, Echo and McCabe. Yeah. And you 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 basically ride the Echo and McCabe up and launch them into their face and sit there with a couple of mirrors on the riders just forcing them to cheat. Otherwise, they get smacked with some two, three, fours with crit. And if they do cheat, you cheat down or miss or just draw. And then McCabe and Ali clear you. Like, th there are some... I think there'll be two very separate and very different um approaches to to mccabe lists now and that's very very good for both of them because it means the opponent has to worry about it already they had to kind of worry about a sadir fuhatsu gun line or a mccabe jorogumo yeah. beta rush and now i think that that has become even more pronounced in terms of the two problems that you're facing them with interesting yeah i think that there's um there's quite a lot that those two models give to the already good wasteful keyword. And yeah, um, as a non-purely Thunders player, I'm not so high because I'm mostly playing against Thunders and not, not playing enough Thunders to like abuse this so hard that I get enjoyment out of it. But um, yeah, those, those, are, those are definitely good times for all the, for all the wasteful players. So I think so. 
Yeah, I think so. We got the next model, um, and I, yeah. I've, I, I've already, I'm already prepared that we got a loads of expert opinion on this in our group of three here. So, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the next model is uh, is a blue card. It's the boiler maker, which is an enforcer construct in the foundry and wildfire keyword. So, it is available in Ten Thunders only for Mei Feng, and it costs nine soul stones. Dominic, and Joker there boy. endeth the lesson. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, okay, so so Drazen up front said, "I got no idea, guys. You got to take it away on that one." And um, <laughs> and we were like, "Yeah, yeah, that's good that you tell us that now because." Uh. Um, so, <laughs> Joker boy, you got, you got any idea how you would rate this model in a May fan context? Uh worse than in a wildfire context <laughs> that that's for sure um I, I don't i don't know I, I think i want to compare him kind of with like the burning version of a whiskey golem um uh, kind of kind of okay. um i don't like his damage track but that's on me i i just don't like two four six uh damage tracks i am I with you there two on a week for nine soul stones is, is just uh, demoralizing yeah. um again i don't see a way to put out a lot of pyre markers in the foundry keyword which is like a main part of his mobility um so honestly i would always pay one soulstone more in a 10 founders may thing list and go for sang um yeah nonetheless I, I i like the model i just think he fits more in the wildfire keyword than in the foundry keyword and we're not talking about arcanists here um he's not adding a lot to 10 founders okay. to confirm when you say you like the model you do mean the physical representation of its card or do you mean any part of the card itself also, also part of the card, honestly, okay. not because they're especially good and not because I would take them in like high competitive, uh, but it, it's, it's something different. And, and I think it, it can add some spice to a wildfire crew, especially in yeah. like more common games, not, not high competitive. Um, so I think, I think it's a nice ad addition for the keyword. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think we will see him a lot on on top tables. Okay, cool. That's also said. So, so I'm I'm gonna try for the sales pitch on that one in Thunders. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you got the Path of Iron, which is once per turn. If it can, uh, if it takes a walk, it can reduce the value of its burning condition to drop scrap or fifty millimeter hazardous burning pyre marker. Um, yeah. I can't make a pitch on that because I think it doesn't get enough burning where it is at because most mm -hmm. um, sources of burning is um, give burning to itself over the call to the burning man. So it's two per turn um, if you make the TN5 and hit the toms on that. And I don't think you want to cheat the toms in because that seems like a waste. Mm, so no. Um, other than that, you can set it aflame with the um, Forgeling. The, that is another source of burning okay then you have to burning then you can drop a scrap marker i think that is okay that doesn't sell nine soul stones for sure right from the ashes is actually just um right the rails with the option to do it um from a scrap Pires or a one. pyre marker to a scrap or a pyre marker it's scrap or pyre marker expressively so for itself it can um it can provide its own mobility and help with setting up stuff um for the crew so that is also okay searing heat yeah searing heat is definitely really good in wildfire and doesn't get us anything here the only positive thing that i can say about the melee attack is that in may fang 2 you got the option to actually um i don't know it's maximum force the trigger something like that um you do um the um attack action for my fang to give it a double focus and then it can go to town with a two four six and um burning plus one attack if you are willing to actually cheat the cards or have the cards which i didn't find myself 
having too much in Mei Feng too, because card draw is not what that keyword does best. So that's rather awkward. There again, awesome if you're playing it in Wildfire and Keras too. Okay, hooray, yeah. you get all the triggers when you have enough burning, which you then will have, and then it has shove aside, and then you get focus shove aside punches um, or on your heels with the um, with the shooting action. That's really great. <sighs> I don't know. It's a secondary. It's a secondary beta to a May Feng keyword, or even a tertiary beta to a May Feng keyword, because you got so many good options in May Feng for betas. I still think that Metal Golem is a good model, although people like say no to me. But I've I've seen I've seen it work too often, and we got Neil Henry, and yeah, I I don't think this will make lists. I don't. I think this will make probably um will be painted and loved and put into the, uh, you know, into the box and never be seen on competitive tables in Mayfeng. That's also my impression. This model is offensively yeah. bad. Yeah. Like, it offends me. Yeah. I, I hadn't seen it until today. I didn't, I didn't even, I'd never even heard of it. I, it, it, is, it is dreadful. And the only thing that saves it is the fact that its melee is not bad. And, and I'm not saying it's good, it's not bad, mm. and in any case where it might be good, its defensive capabilities are so horrendous that it will be, in fact, dead. Yeah, I, I think that 246 is um is not a good damage track. I, I hate this damage track. It's used yeah. too much on models since, I think, um, Explorer's release saw, like, a absolute massive increase of 12, 246. And 246 is super awkward okay cool if you spike it's it's great of course it's a better spike than a uh, three four five but i take my min three every day if this was min yeah. three yeah having another min three beater uh cool i'm always down for that here not i think if we would be talking wildfire the excitement would be would be a bit higher because this opens up stuff for wildfire that um that are yeah, kind of yeah, definitely. Carries yeah. carries two, even one, but I think especially carries two. Yeah, we can cool. talk about him, but not on ten. Yeah, that would be kind of exciting. And as we are not here to talk about um blue stuff, we're gonna keep it at that and say, if you like the model, uh, yeah, you're gonna paint it really beautifully and then cry that you're not playing Arcanist. Cool. <laughs> Moving on. Next on the line, we got um the the green addition to our ten thunders thing. And if you are playing retainer keyword, that means you're still playing Yan Lo after he got nerfed, you get mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the option to hire a ghost eater and his friendly ghost lights now. And yeah, we're going to look at, um, at the question, would you like to do that? So Dominic, you got an idea um, if um, this is a viable thing to do, hiring a ghost eater or not? Uh, from reading a car, I think it is, and I'm I'm really curious to to hear uh, Racing's experience uh, if he played him on the table. Uh, I think he does again more for the green side of his card. Uh, I really love his instill you. That that's for sure. That's just straight up great for a Yanlo two crew or Yanlo one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the rest is okay for. His, Eight soulstone model. Um, not sure if I would hire him because I think in Yan Lo you're very short on eight soulstone slots. Uh, he definitely cannot compete with Manos. Um, I think you can talk about if it's heal and if his other ability can compete with Sang Wang um, mm -hmm. if you're going for the healing factor. Um, yeah, a tough spot. I, I like the model. I'm not sure if I would fit him in a Yan Lo list easily, but I would like to try. Have, have you tried, Grayson? Um, so, uh, I don't play Yan Lo uh, in Thunders anymore uh, <laughs> since the nerf. Um, he was uh, far, far too good pre-nerf and um i then at, sort of left it a few weeks so that i wasn't sort of um completely skewed by my view of what yanlo was and i wanted to instead sort of play you know what yanlo is um and in my opinion what he is um is pretty poor 
compared to <laughs> some of the other competitive options. That said, um, Ghost Eater fixes to an extent one of the things that the nerf changed. So let's ignore what was before because it doesn't exist anymore and it's irrelevant. What is now is a situation where Kamainu are not particularly appealing options, neither are Gokudo. And so you're lacking minions which can hold Yanlo's reliquary or be given reliquaries in order to draw cards. And Yanlo's keyword has some really good models, but they do require cards to function well, and he otherwise lacked the ability to get those cards, including himself. You know, he's a, he's a solid model himself, but you want to be able to get those obeys off. You want to be able to get those... Um, attacks from Manos off. And I agree, you can't compare this model with Manos, but that goes for most of the models in the game. And you're going to be running this guy and Manos. Um, the problem, the biggest problem, is the same as it has always been, which is that Yanlo is that much better in Rezzers. Why would you play him in Thunders? Yeah. Um, and, I, and that is a, is a problem. But if you're someone that just loves Thunders and just wants to play Thunders and you love Yanlo and you want to play this, I think you will probably end up with a Ghost Eater on the table and it will take the Soul Stone slot that Komainu and Gokudo used to take. Um, his abilities to use the Ghost Lights for Soul Stones and to heal from them and hard to wound and, and all that stuff um, genuinely... A uh, good spirit barrage, you know, a, a 12 inch willpower attack. Um, genuinely not bad at all. Um, and as you say, having instilled youth, yeah, solid. I think it's a solid model in, from a Thunder's perspective, a fairly poor keyword. So, yeah, that's that's where I end up. Okay, sounds good. I mean, from from the from the stuff that's on the card, he's kind of he's kind of decent, actually. Being able to use soulstone, um, giving positive flips to models that spend soulstones within five, hard to wound. Um, he can summon ghost lights, which is I think the key, the key thing that we take him for in Yan Lo, uh, especially I think in Yan Lo too, and um, final whale, yeah, whatever. Um. Melee, not so hard. Shooting attack is kind of nice. Um, I don't think we benefit too much from this one in um, in Yan Lo. I mean, it ignores friendly fire, so at least you don't have to think about him being useless once you go to town with your beaters. And yeah, healing is good, but I think Yan Lo had basically enough healing before this. Um, you could drop Sun Kiang, I think. Sun Kiang was very good in a bubble netter because yeah. you know uh, yeah, Bedside Mana was applying multiple yeah, yeah, times, yeah. but I, I'm I was never a big fan of uh, Sun Kiang personally. I, I found him to be very clunky. Then um, I think that's a straight swap. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. For, for for me, for me, that would be straight the swap for um because if and <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was I was always playing more Yan Lo one than I was playing Yan Lo two, and I, and still am because um. For for some keywords, my my switch never happened. I was like, nah. well, then you tell us, like, if if yeah, because I I was much much much. In fact, I don't think I ever played Yellow One. I played two only. Uh, in in one, I presume you're not playing the Ghost Eater as much because mm. it's in two where he provides the cards for you with the yep. with the light reliquary transfer. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I think in in one you you are more you're more open to out of keyword and um generally just take what you like to take and I don't necessarily think that he um that he does um cut it in thunders to go into yanlo one lists a lot that being said if i play yanlo 2 then yeah for tossing the relics the reliquaries from man to man to draw cards this is a very good model gives you some healing um you can summon the ghost lights which are okay i think it is very very and what you said this taking the place of your minions um that is a very risky thing to do because if um all your minions die then the last minion uh, just loses the yan low reliquary and yan low gets stranded on movement too so you actually should hire something that can take more hits than a ghost light. You can't own, cannot rely on your totem and only yeah. ghost lights. So one Gokudo, one Komaino, or you take Tosh and um, have Toshiro. 
um, summon stuff only. And that's where the Ghost Eater gets more interesting for Thunders now, because, and this is the big sales pitch, we can now drop Corpse Markers, and believe it or not, that never, never was an option in Thunders. There was nothing that could give you Corpse Markers. The only model in Thunders that can give you Corpse Markers and Akanami, and that is a fucking Bayou model. So, yeah. Um, and <laughs> that is and that is the thing. Enemy living, undead, or beast only. Um, this can give you corpse markers to play with. Mm. Alas, you have to damnably <laughs> shoot uh, the opponent's models for this. So, yeah, that is well. And you don't have the suit baked in. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, I mean, we're we're talking playing Yando and Thunders. There, this is um, this is uh, you need right, to. Right, we're you, we're already clutching. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be able to play. That is what I what I would uh, <laughs> that I would, what I would inject here. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's great. But um, I think it's better in green in a keyword that is better in green. So yeah, I I would second your opinions or or tertiary it or whatever you say. <laughs> whenever <laughs> I'm when gonna you, third them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna third your opinions at this point. I'm gonna say yeah, this is nice, but this is not gonna get us all excited. In orange, well, yeah. one thing I I want to add that they at least I think in my opinion thought about the suit on the trigger on Instill Youth because. I think now you can finally make use of every, uh, like, six of any color. Because you need the mask for for Denise, uh, you yeah, okay, need the yeah. crow for Yan Lo himself, and you need rams or the mask for Manus, and now you have finally yeah. a low tome as well, which is, I think, at least well thought. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's fair. I mean, I, I don't see how I would use this in, um, in my Yan Lo one place, to be honest. Um, because there isn't that much that I would want to stone for other than damage reduction. So I think in Yanlo 2 it's it's great because if you stone for a suit, you get a positive and thus ignore concealment on your base. That was the big selling point, and I think this holds yeah. true in Thunders as well. That that is that is good for that. That mm -hmm. that definitely it's good for Yanlo 2. I think you should play this in Yanlo 2 for sure. But other than that well cool um and thus this um episode comes to a conclusion as um, we have actually talked about this so what is um what is like the bottom line of all we said we talked about all the models that we as and thunders get access to are we super hype are we very excited or is it a mixed bag or are you saying like yeah ashes or not doesn't matter dominic <laughs> I, I'm not super hyped, which is a good sign, because that would probably mean there is something broken in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say it's on the line where it does matter because it brings more options to the game, but without like changing the matter or, or changing the strength of different masters like significantly. Um, I, I'm convinced, honestly. I, I really like, even though I don't like all the models, I think there is something for competitive play. I think there's something for like casual play in there. Uh, and overall, nothing game breaking. And that's good on its own. Very fair. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I am really happy that nothing in Ashes stands out to me as madness levels um like the fact that there are new new bits and pieces bringing new options to different keywords that make me want to test all of my masters again and try different stuff that's great i really like that that's really um rekindled um interest for me in my whole roster that i play um and especially with zeng being versatile and being able to throw into all of them and sen being in in two masters that i really like playing anyway and uh, mccabe being something that i was already thinking mm, might be good in gg4 here have the minaco engine and an echo to play with okay well now i've got some new toys but none of those make me think wow this is this is damien um so I'm excited and happy to have new options while not being um, 
as you say, there's nothing here that stands out to me as broken. Yeah. That is, uh, that is uh, I think, a fair summary. And that is where I would stand as well, after all. I think even Ducat? Um, yeah, I think even Ducat. Ducat is, um, it's, while it is, while it is, uh, in my opinion, a very powerful and very unnecessary addition in the combination uh, Wastel 10 Thunders, I don't think it is, um, I don't think that it is madness level brokenness that we are seeing. Um, this is just, this is just a shift towards something and... I think people, I, you have to deal with McCabe. It's it's a problem. Um, your McCabe player is now investing in an eight soulstorm model that summons like defense four stuff. Yeah. Um, if you if your offensive cap capability is good enough, you're gonna make him waste his resources by doing that. And he's also dawdling in his deployment zone, so you can run rings around him. Um, I, I don't like it because um, it gives me the impression that nobody thought about this, to be honest. Do you really think so? I, 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 just... I don't know. Sometimes I get the... Sometimes things are so obvious sometimes. And I sometimes get the feeling, didn't you guys think about it? And your question is, is probably rightly asked because I'm very, very probably wrong and somebody had thought about this and thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Then I would just be of a different opinion that is fine i guess i desperately desperately hope they had thought of that <laughs> like, um uh, I, i'm very sure that there were things in the game that ended up being in the game that nobody had thought about and this is just from not everyone having the perspective to um, sure challenge rabbit i think is a, a solid example yeah. of that yeah, yeah. challenge rabbit yeah. is definitely a face bomb um but no that, one intended that shit yeah <laughs> that, that, but that leads us to the to the question yeah that's not a problem you know um uh that is that is that is okay let it be a face palm for two months and then faq it the question is why is it still in the game and i don't and yes. I, I don't see host i don't see host to cut and um katashiros in that category it's just super powerful and i kind of dislike having um thunderous players having that options because they're having enough options as is in competitive play um but yeah it is what it is i'm 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 okay I'm okay with that. I'm just not just not too excited to see to see um one keyword get and here you have an all solution for like three of your problems at once and a lot of other keywords that basically needed needed a solution for like ten problems get something that goes yeah you get you get a model that you get because we printed the um keyword on the card. It's actually a model for another crew, but we needed to put this on a, in another keyword so it fits with the design of our book. Um, that is what what angers me sometimes. But it's it's overall good. I think the release of Ashes is a is a good format for the game. Everyone gets something, and as long as it's not too overtuned, I'm I'm very happy with this. Yeah, it seems solid to me. I mean, I um, I should offer a belated apology to any casual player um because i i ju that's just I, it just doesn't I, I, my brain doesn't work that way um and so there may be casual appeal to these models that i'm just missing entirely and um and if so please enjoy the models like really uh ignore me entirely but uh <laughs> I, I i can't help but look at them in the way that i do and yeah um uh, oh, yeah. It's also like a tiny, tiny gripe if you wanted one, which is that we got six Thunders models and then we got five non-Thunders models. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Give me some orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, that is that, that is very little orange. It's I was preparing these um these podcasts a bit, and that's the least amount of models anyone got. It's is it really? Little, oh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be low. But I didn't know it was the least. That's the least, actually. Uh, six is Fair the enough. least. Yeah, that's 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 not a lot um yeah oh well still fun <laughs> yeah i think it's still gonna be fun um cool cool that was very awesome guys um i thank you for being here uh, it was a uh, was a good time and i hope all listeners enjoy hearing you guys talk about this stuff with me um 
If anyone wants to check out our two guests from today, they both have awesome YouTube channels where they show their prowess with uh, the pieces we talked about from time to time. And I will, of course, put the, the links to their YouTube channels in this video's description. Um, for all of you that are listening to the podcast, I'm going to try to put it in the description, but I'm not sure it's going to be easy, easily accessible. Uh, depending on what medium you use so guys if you want to like you plug your own youtube channels this would be the time unless you're ashamed and don't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> well first an apology for running over dominic several times during the uh, the show uh, i can't help myself i get excited um but if you want to listen to more of me blathering on about competitive stuff or uh, mainly just looking at Uh, recorded Vassal games, either mine or other um, comp tables, then it's Drayson Gaming, D-R-A-Y-S-E-N Gaming, um, over on YouTube. And um, yeah, feel free to have a look if that's something you are interested in. Uh, yes, you should definitely do that. They're much better than mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can have a look at some... Uh, funny not always great games uh, of myself on on chocoboy on, on youtube but I, i'm not like a professional streamer like the other two guys <laughs> well if i ever be professional you gotta tell something to pay me for what i'm doing so i'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm uh, just just re related to myself <laughs> yeah fair, fair. um cool yeah very good um enjoyed the talk uh, thank you guys also for providing content for the community that's very important and uh was very happy to have you Anyhow, everyone that was watching or, or listening, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, uh, give a comment if you like this. And yeah, I'll see you for the next episodes um, and wish you a very nice time until then. Have a good one, everyone.